Yes, sir. Gordon. with the usual 16,000 plus have turned out for Saturday night at Big East basketball, a character check, you could say, for both of these clubs. Back on Tuesday night, Providence College went down to Alumni Hall, played the nationally ranked Redmen to a standstill, but couldn't pull it off. Malik Seeley had the great night, and Providence lost it in overtime, 85-79. Meanwhile, the next night, Billy Owens put on one of his usual shows in the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, New York. The Connecticut Huskies go up there. They have a chance at the end of regulation. They have a chance here at the end of overtime to pull out a win. But John Gwynn unable to get the shot down. And Connecticut and Providence both come into tonight's game on two straight losses. Very unusual, especially for this Connecticut club. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Gorman along with Clark Kellogg. And how about the respective states of mind for both of these clubs coming in? Well, on the one hand, Providence felt like they played their best basketball game of the season, even in defeat. So they feel good coming in here feeling like they're playing well. UConn, on the other hand, felt like they had a chance to win that game at the Dome and should have won it. So I think there's probably a little added incentive for the Huskies tonight. All right, we'll see what happens here tonight. Providence College, of course, as always, is looking to force tempo just about every time they come out onto the floor. And this year, the guy who forces all the tempo is Eric Murdoch. Eric Murdoch. They label crunch time in the ball game EMT time simply because he's been doing it in a big way all season long. 31 points a game, but he's a complete player. He does a lot for them defensively and also averages five rebounds a game. The Huskies like to force turnovers as opposed to tempo, and Scott Burrell, one of the steel leaders in the country. Averaging four steals a game. There you see second in the nation. And for the Huskies, it's important that they turn people over so they can get some easy basket opportunities from their defense. Jim Calhoun, known as a defensive coach, does he do anything special to try to stop the 31 points a game in league play out of Eric Murdoch? With Eric Murdoch, it's a matter of containment. When he has the ball, you want to play him tough. When he doesn't have it, you want to see that he doesn't get it back. How about the, the Friars depend so much on the three-point shot and depend so much on Murdoch. If you can take him out early, can you put them in a big hole there's that opportunity but again Murdoch is the kind of guy that's going to get his numbers if he's not in foul trouble and this prior team has some other guys that can knock down the three-point shot Eric Murdoch on one of the great roles of any college basketball player in the country should be fun here on a Saturday night Connecticut and Providence set to go at it at the Hartford Civic Center and we'll be back after these words from your local station and a crowd of 16,000 plus as usual has turned out here to see their Huskies play basketball and the Huskies have won 11 straight in this building they had their home streak stopped at st john's back at gamble there a week ago on national tv but in the hartford civic center they're a tough club let's meet the starting lineups here's roger baker good evening ladies and gentlemen welcome to big east basketball here at the hartford civic center and tonight's matchup between the friars of providence college and the huskies of the university of connecticut and now let's meet the starting lineups at forward for Providence, a 6'7 sophomore from College Park, Georgia, number 32, Tony Turner. At forward for Connecticut, a 6'7 sophomore from Bridgeport, Connecticut, number 24, Scott Burrell. At forward for Providence, a 6'7 junior from East Orange, New Jersey, number 24, Marquise Bragg. Forward for Connecticut, a 6'7 sophomore from Orlando, Florida, number 42, Torino Walker. At center for Providence, a 6'7 junior from Bridgeport, Connecticut, number 55, Marvin Sadler. At center for Connecticut, a 6'9 junior from Florence, South Carolina, number 22, Rod Sellers. At guard for Providence, a 6'4 junior from North Providence, Rhode Island, number 35, Ken McDonald. At guard for Connecticut, a 6'3 junior from Tel Aviv, Israel, number 10, Gilad Katz. At guard for Providence, a 6'2 senior from Bridgewater, New Jersey, number 14, Eric Murdoch. At guard for Connecticut, a 6'2 junior from Bridgeport, Connecticut, number 13, Chris Smith. Introducing the head coaches for the Friars of Providence College, Rick Barnes, and for the Huskies of Connecticut, Jim Calhoun. 
Tonight's officials are Jim Burr, Pete Papia, and Mike Kitts. So we are just about set to go here at the Hartford Civic Center. Big East basketball, the Huskies and Friars, and we'll be back after these words from your local. against New England Hornets, but the Friars, the last team to beat them back in 1989 at the Providence Civic Center. They really love their basketball here in Connecticut, and they'll be on their feet cheering until the Huskies score. It'll be Bragg and Sellers going up. And Rod's ready. But the Friars control the tap, and it'll be Smith picking up Murdoch's first trip. Providence will play all man-to-man. -man. Here we see the Huskies in man-to-man. -man. They'll mix their defenses up a little more. Turner comes up shooting and drains a three to open the game. He's got the ability to knock down the triple. Had a big game in that win against Georgetown from behind the arc, so he's capable as a shooter. Katz will be the point guard to open the game for the Connecticut Huskies. He's covered by McDonald outside. Pass is tipped out of bounds by one of the Friars. Rick Barnes up quickly. Wanted to point the other way, but didn't have the heart. The Huskies have hit a little air pocket here, having lost their last two. And part of the reason is their execution in the half court. They need to shoot the ball fairly well when they have to set up and run plays in the half court situation tonight. Murdoch is on Smith, and that's a great matchup. Cash pulls up. He's short with it. Burrell is there. Puts it up. Counting the foul. Big time follow there by Scott Burrell. What? Well, if you're not going to shoot it well, then you better pound the offensive glass. Cats with an off-balance brick. And Burrell, active on the offensive glass, gets it up and down and draws the foul. Sadler got the foul, his first. And Burrell, a chance to tie the game. You know, you talk about Scott Burrell, and the first thing that comes out of anybody's mouth when they talk about him is he's a great athlete. And I think his athleticism is just a step ahead of his ability as a basketball player. He's probably a 9.5 on the 1 to 10 scale athletically and probably about an 8 as a basketball player right now on the 1 to 10 scale. What the big decision for Scott Burrell will be? Does he try to become a 10 in basketball or does he stay about a 9.5 in baseball, which is what he is, and Murdoch gets a runner in the lane. He is a scorer, deceptively strong. He can get inside and finish. Fires out quickly, 5-2, hitting the first two shots. Serena Walker trying to put a move on Sadler. Smith down on the baseline, nowhere to go. Blocking foul down there, and Sadler, a minute 20 into the game, has his second foul. Didn't quite get all the way over on the baseline. You almost want to step out of bounds when you try to cut off penetration along that baseline. Sandler didn't get there that time. Vicky Simpkins is quickly up off the Providence bench looking to get in. Burrell will try outside. Misses a three. Rebound loose. Bragg's got it in the corner, but he's doubled. And saves it inbound to Murdoch. Murdoch, who likes to put that left shoulder down and go, and a hand check is called on Chris Smith, I believe. I think you're right, Mike. Chris Smith with the little shove right about the top of the key. And Providence, they want to run. If they can get turnovers or defensive boards, they want to push the basketball up the floor. Jim Calhoun is up talking to Jim Burr, and he's trying to find out are we going to allow hand checking tonight, or aren't we? McDonald sneaks in for two. Somebody went to sleep for the Huskies. Looked like they went to man-to-man -man against the baseline out-of-bounds play, and somebody got lost. Cats put a nice move on McDonald to lose him. Takes it all the way down, and Sellers gets two. There, you didn't go for the ball there, Clark. I, I was surprised. Know, I was a little slow reaction. It was too far away from the hole for me to go after. Yeah. It's got to be in scoring position for me to get down on the floor after. Sellers looking inside at Walker now kicks it back out. They reverse it to Smith over the top and tipped away nicely. And it was a double tip as Burrell got a hand on Boy, nice play by Tony Turner to work to get in position defensively. 
to get a hand on that pass. Dickie Simpkins in the game now. Here's Murdoch quickly the other way. He's got McDonald on a wing. Murdoch takes it in and draws the foul. Well, I'll tell you what, Murdoch doing a lot of self-talking. He's got that intensity in his eyes and really souping himself up for this one. Rod Sellers picked up the foul, his first, second on the team. McDonald is on the bench, and Chris Watts has checked in. You know, you talk about Providence in this game. They're coming off an overtime loss in which they played extremely well. They need to handle the pressure as Eric Murdoch, something that we won't see very often with him missing a free throw. But they need to handle the ball well. They've got to get a good shot, I think, 85 to 90% of the time. I think they just have to be efficient in getting good shots. They have to rebound the ball defensively. And they need to be able to get some easy hoops to balance their perimeter game. Three for Murdoch and a four-point lead. Providence has got it 8-4. Murdoch with the one-on-one -on -one pressure on Smith. Caps, good look inside for Sellers. Back out to Smith, top of the key, and he drains it. Count it for two. First bucket for Chris Smith tonight. A great battle between Smith and Murdoch, two of the premier guards in the Big East. No question about that, an excellent matchup. Watts wants to go inside to Simpkins, comes the other way to Turner, who knocks down his second three. I can tell you that when shooters get going early, they often stay on for the night. And Turner burying a couple of threes here early. And you love to see him all of a sudden when they go back on defense. They're on their toes, they're jumping around. Great point. Caps answers the call. He lied Caps with the three. Looking like a shootout here in Hartford. Turner's open again. Not this time. Simpkins pretty good position for the rebound, but he couldn't control it. Fred Campbell will check into the game for the Flyers now, and Turner goes to the bench. And it's not because he took a three. Rick Barnes encourages his guys to shoot that triple every opportunity they get. They average about 18 three-point field goal attempts per game. Both teams finding the range early here. Moreno Walker will fake on the pass. Pretty good spin. Nice lean in for two. <laughs> Hello. Nice little up and under after he put it on the floor a little bit. Watch the senior top of the key to Campbell. They come to Murdoch. And Smith is right there with him. Eric will fire. Ripped off by Burrell. Up to Katz. Huskies a chance to grab a lead. Sellers wants it in the blocks. Watts takes it away from Katz and then loses it out of bounds. And John Gwynn will check into the Connecticut line. But before John Gwynn gets a chance to play, we're going to get a timeout. 15-44 left to go here first half. We are tied at 11. Walker is showing it all here. Little creativity by the big guy. He's going to put it on the floor and then make a nice little spin move. Now he's going to lift Simpkins momentarily and then up and under and the nice finish. 6'7 sophomore out of Orlando, Florida with two, and we are tied at 11. 15.44 to go here in the first half. Well, we had an interesting conversation with Jim Calhoun about Terreno Walker in terms of his mild-manneredness. He's an aggressive player on the floor, but, but really pulls back and is not quite as mean as Jim Calhoun would like to see him be. But with that body, I don't think um, Torino will ever have a problem with somebody wanting to take advantage of him. Again, it is not often you really get two premier players who in a man-to-man -man defense get to cover each other, and that's what we're seeing in Corral. Green's a jump shot, but Smith and Murdoch are right in each other's faces on both ends. Well, Burrell is trying to move to a 9, 9.5 on the basketball scale here early, Mike. First steal of the game, and Gwen comes up with it. Gwen, Gwen wants, it. wants it badly. Campbell can't control the rebound, and it comes back to Smith. Oh! 
Simpkins jumping out on Smith. A mismatch there, and Smith takes it right down the lane. Well, the point you make about both teams playing and an excellent one is here turnover. Smith looks to capitalize, can't get it down. But so often in the college game, you don't see the marquee players hook up and go head to head. Campbell's little runner won't go. Loose ball rebound to Burrell, who get a lot of them. And credit both coaches for that. I mean, they come out and they're playing man to man. Usually you see all these junk zones and everything else. John Gwynn, pretty good up fake. Sent Chris Watts flying. Burrell. And the final will be on Marquis Bray. Both teams out quickly here. You know, you talk about Connecticut as we get ready to see almost wholesale substitutions for, for the Friars. What do you think of this style, Clark? I'm not trying to put you in a position to criticize anyone, but we're like five minutes into the game, and we have seen nine Providence players, and some guys have been to the bench twice already. I think Rick Barnes wants to play a lot of people to keep his players fresh. You talk about six minutes into the game, a little over five minutes into the game, and you wonder who could actually be needing a blow at this point. But at the same time, he probably told his players, hey, everybody's going to play some minutes, and we're going to shuffle people in and out. And I'm sure they're expecting that. But it can be a little tough for the players sometimes. Second basket for Rod Sellers, and biggest Connecticut lead at six. Trent Ford is one of the many who just came in. Gives to Simpkins. They find Franklin Weston down on the baseline. Important possession here. The Friars have come up empty the last two trips. Have turned it over a couple of times. They need something good. Ford front rims it. Sadler, nice follow. Give him the bucket and the foul. Doesn't get much better than that in the paint area on the offensive rebound by Sadler. Using that ample frame of his to get the, the missed shot by Forbes. Good pressure by John Gwynn. But Sadler right there inside, and it looks like Williams picked up the foul over the top. Just in the game, picks up his first, and Sadler, a 57% free throw shooter. Looks better than that on that one. Now we'll see some full court pressure by the Friars. You know, if you're a fan, you have to love this type of game. Both teams are fresh. Smith, the dish underneath. Sellers turns. No, Simpkins who has played so well as a freshman comes down with the rebound. I've seen Simpkins play a few times, and I'm really impressed with his poise, his versatility. He's 6'9", but he can handle the ball. They'll use him sometimes as another ball handler against the pressure. That time he challenged the shot by Seller. He's got a bright upside. Pretty good pass there by Forbes. Simpkins can't get it down, stays with it, no, and Smith comes away with it. Murdoch slapping it out of bounds, and it went off Chris Smith. He gives the official a little foul. It's good defensive pressure that time by Eric Murdoch, and people talk about his numbers. He's averaging 31 a game, and obviously that's what jumps out at you, but he gets five boards, three assists, three steals. He's got the whole package. He's always the marked man, and he takes the floor. Hello. Oh, that's a big-time shot right there. Make me look good, e EMT. Make me look good now. You want to say he forced it, and then he drains it. Morales' well, quick pass is picked off by Forbes. Smith, the loose ball. Feeds for Sellers, who leans in and gets two. This is what the Friars want Forbes to give them. Speed getting the ball from the backcourt to the frontcourt. Weston changed the shot because Sellers got there. Volleyball rebound goes out of bounds and will come back to Connecticut. Michael and Sarulik will come in for the Huskies. Jim Calhoun, given the pace of this game, is going to have to use his bench liberally, but right now the Huskies get a lot slower off that substitution. They really do. <laughs> and that may play into the hands of the Friars if they apply full court pressure. Michael looking to set the half-court offense, trying to spin away from Forbes. Morrell comes up shooting too hard. 
Williams kept it alive. Sarulik off the floor with it, lost it. Friars are going to come up with it. Sarulik dives in there. Jump ball is called. Connecticut will get it on the alternating possession. Greg and Troy Brown are going to come into the game for the Friars. Smith and Walker check back in for the Huskies. Gwynn and Burrell go to the bench along with Sadler and Simpkins. Smith drains one from the corner. You know, so often when you play man-to-man -man on the baseline out-of-bounds play, you can get a scoring opportunity. All you need to do is set a good pick. And I think Terreno Walker, the guy who freed Chris Smith for that rainbow. Smith amazes me. He will miss the little 10-foot jumper in the lane, and then he'll make that shot you just saw more often than not. Murray Williams called with a foul, and I believe now he has three. That'll jack up your fouls per minutes played ratio in a hurry. We are going to get a timeout with 11.48 left to go here first half. 21-16, UConn back after these words from your local station. Little penetration and serve. Smith inside to Sellers, who initiates a little contact, but an excellent no call as Sadler tried to get the foul. I was mentioning how Rick Barnes sends players in and out of the game. Number 14, though, stays out there the whole time. He doesn't even <laughs> look up when the subs are coming in. Troy Brown, the freshman, buries a jump shot. Well, they really like his ability. Excellent body, nice touch. Has just had a tough time picking up things as rapidly as they would like, but he's got big time potential. Heck of a rebounder. Forbes just kind of put a little bear hug on Smith there. I'm not sure how he thought he was going to get away with that when he gets a look from Rick Barnes. That's the fourth on the Friars. Five team fouls on Connecticut, and we're not even halfway through this first half. And Cerulek and Heifel go to the bench. It is Smith, Walker, Sellers, Katz, and Burrell. So Jim Calhoun back to his starting lineup. Smith taking it strong. Found a way to get it up there. Loose ball slapped away from Brown. They go to the floor again. And this time it'll go back to Providence. There have been a lot of scrambles for loose balls, especially at, well, actually at both ends. You know, when you go up to get it, you have to squeeze it and come out of there with it. Free Murdoch. So this is where Eric has to be careful that he doesn't hold it too much if he doesn't have immediate offense. Forbes hits a little runner in the lane. Here's the matchup, folks. Murdoch and Smith. We're the finer guys not only in the Big East, but in the country. When you talk about backcourt play. Smith really dribbles the ball above his knees and he really has a low dribble. That was partially blocked. All fires underneath. Bragg on the break to Murdoch. Huskies back quickly defensively. Forbes will trouble getting the hint. Nowhere to go. Cats good defense. And it'll go back to Connecticut. Great defense there by Gillard Katz. Both teams shooting the ball pretty well here early. Not yet halfway through this first half. 21-20 Huskies by one. Connecticut is a perimeter team in the half court other than offensive board. Maybe Sellers will get an occasional post up, but this is basically what they're doing in the half court. Caps hits his second three of the night. And if they shoot it well, then they're able to get into their pressure because they do that after made field goal. Donald up high, looking low for Bragg. Marquise buries a turnaround. Boy, the shot was beautiful, but the pass. Ken McDonald took another dribble to create a nice passing lane for himself, and then skirted a bounce pass in there at about three inches off the floor, the only place he could get to Bragg. Turner jumps out on Burrell. 
Walker coming to help. Smith is trying to post up Murdoch here on the lower right side of the screen. Cass looking for that matchup. Smith comes out for it. Finds some room in the baseline. He gets hammered by Bragg as he makes the drive. Well, a nice take that time by Smith. Murdoch gambled momentarily on the baseline. And that allowed Smith to get that penetration and took it in strong to draw the foul. Second on Marquise and the fifth on the team. Seton Hall, the early lead over Syracuse as we check the Buick scoreboard. We'll be keeping you updated on Big East games all night long. St. John's and Pitt also playing tonight. As well as Boston College and Georgetown. Seven points, two rebounds now. The numbers for Chris Smith as Sadler comes in and Bragg sits down. Smith two for two and Lyman DePriest will check into the game first time for the Connecticut Huskies. Clark, I didn't know of any other player I can recall in Biggie's history, I want to say, other than Lyman DePries, who when you look at his numbers, you say, well, he's not going to be much of a factor in the game, and then he gets out there and plays, and he's a big factor in the game. You can always be a big factor, even if you don't score, if you rebound and defend people and come up with some of those effort plays that are going to help you win ball games, and that's what Lyman DePries does. Came up with a big time block in the final seconds against the Villanova Wildcats to save a game this year. Murdoch will double pump. <laughs> That's a score doing that. When you're in the group, he's laughing all the way back to half court. But he stated he's made some shots that have even surprised himself as he's been in this unbelievable group for about the last 12 or 13 games. John Gwynn gets it back to Burrell. Nearly traveled as he made the catch. Smith trying to find some room in the baseline. There is none. Now he creates space and gets it down. Well, you're seeing two creative players paint some nice pictures here early. And McDonald buries a tree on the other end. See, if you're a fan, you, you have to love this kind of action. Both teams playing man to man. You've got some pressure. And both teams playing well offensively. No shot clock violations tonight, either. Not even and close. Sellers, no rebound symptoms. Friars a chance to grab the lead as we're just under eight minutes to go here first half. Simpkins, great cut to the hoop without the ball. Can't get it down. Gets his own rebound, though, and traveled with it according to Pete Potter. And that gets the entire province college bench up. We are going to get a timeout. Seven minutes, 32 seconds to go here first half. 28-27 Huskies by one. Alvin Bird goes in for a jam. Michael LaValle, and they count the bucket. Welcome back to Hartford, everyone. And a quick reminder, this copyrighted telecast is produced by authority of the Big East Conference and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Conference is prohibited. Rick Barnes looks on, 28-27, his Friars down by one. It's 7.32 to go here, and nearly a pickoff, and it is a steal by Trent Ford. Oh, not the kind of pass you want to make against pressure. Oh, oh great look and a better block by Scott Burrell, but a foul is called. <laughs> you make the call. Trent Forbes with the excellent find here to Sandler, but watch Burrell show you how he can hop. And I tell you what, an awful lot of the orange. Another angle. Ooh, maybe a touch with the lower body, but you couldn't tell him that. Sadler misses the free throw, Jim Calhoun. Not saying a word. <laughs> the new mellow, Jim Calhoun. Yeah, he's mellow for about the next five seconds. Sadler one of two, and we are tied at 28. Four points for Marvin Sadler. That's his average. 
Chris Smith, coast to coast, takes the bump and gets the bucket. You know, I think you can see here why coaches talk jump stop when you go into the lane. It gives you a better power base. See that two-foot stop and the explosion? And the foul picked up that time by Dick, Dickie Simpkins. His first, sixth on the team, Smith back at the free throw line. Well, just a nice, strong move. And there you see the numbers of the two marquee players here tonight. Five of seven shooting for Chris Smith in the field. Some then shooting just 40% from the floor in conference play. Jimmy Turner along with the three. Sellers good position looking for the outlet. Finds Smith up to Gwynn. Gwynn short with the pull up. And Turner back there for the rebound. Maybe two steps out of his range in transition that time. Over to Corey Floyd in the game. Dumps it for Simpkins and he hits the short jump. John Gwynn with some daylight. Bullet pass. And I need a bullet pass to sell it. <laughs> nice catch. Keep your head up broad. Turner not shy tonight. In and out with that one. Tipped out of bounds by Scott Burrell. It'll be Providence ball. I tell you what, Tony Turner, after the quick start, has missed his last two, but he's been wide open. The Huskies going to have to find Tony Turner. He can make them pay dearly. Serena Walker in and Burrell out. Burrell stays in and Sellers sits down. Forbes finds Turner, who gets doubled immediately. They're listening to your clock, and John Gwynn commits a foul outside. Both coaches doing a pretty nice job here of shuffling personnel, keeping fresh bodies on the floor. In the face of this game, rapid. If you're a high school kid watching right now, you want to go to one of these two schools because if you make the team, you play. You get a chance to show what you can do. Simpkins out and Bragg back in. McDonald and Troy Brown are also waiting to come in. Troy Brown come in for Saddle. Marvin looking pretty smooth at the free throw line for a guy shooting in the 50s. He's already surpassed his season's average in points. So he's been a solid contributor here tonight. There's only one left, man. One. <laughs> Reno Walker ripping it off up to Smith. Ahead to Murray Williams, who is really running the floor. Can't get the layup down. Drag the outlet to four. This is just a track meet. Murray Williams on the floor. Corey Floyd diving for it. Make that Sadler who went after. Burrell carries a three. Warm up jump shot. Nobody within four feet of him. That was an up and down right there on Sadler, but the game's so fast, some of these are going to be missed. Foul's going to oh. be on Bragg, I believe, right? Oh, I think he just went in there and took it away. If it is on Marquise, it's his third. Here we're going to see the tail end of this play. Now watch Marquise Bragg. Oh, I think he just steps in and uses those well-twisted biceps to get one. 17 foul on the Friars. Team fouls are even at seven apiece. Murdoch back from a very short rest on the bench. And Floyd sits down, and John Gwynn is at the free throw line. Luke Barnes will stay for the moment. No, he won't stay with Marquise Bragg, I don't think, as Dickie Simpkins gets up off the fire bench. Mr. Offense, John Gwynn, 14 points a game off the bench. Needs to dribble, though needs the bounce to get into a shooting rhythm. I think he pounced on that dribble to elevate himself. He gets great elevation on his shot. You give him a wide open 20 footer and he'll put it on the floor first before he'll shoot it. He will. <laughs> You're exactly right. Like that rhythm bounce. Wren's <laughs> got them both. And it's a seven point Husky lead with 548 to go. Campbell is back into the Providence line. Well, you want to try to keep it away from the sidelines against this Husky pressure. 
Can we see Simpkins showing you his ball handling ability? Forbes finds Campbell. They're having a little difficulty finding Murdoch right now. And Eric looks at Dickie Simpkins and says, me? Bring it my way. Me, yeah. <laughs> Bring it my way. Critical juncture here for the Friars because things have gotten a little more than cozy for them. Simpkins. Walker did a nice job of defensive position there. The quick outlet to Smith. Long bounce pass for Gwynn. You saw him dribble it and lay it in. Even on layups, he's going to take that one bounce. Smith the steal on Murdoch. Between the legs, pull up jumper. Gets his own rebound. Got it. 15 for Chris Smith. And Providence College wants a tie. 4.59 to go in the half, and suddenly the Huskies are up 11. Scribble doesn't get the first thrust, stays with his own, and gets the favorable roll. The turnover's becoming a problem for the Friars, and we talked about how important it is for the Huskies to turn people over. They've done it pretty well here, as you see the points off turnover. Plus nine for the Huskies. Oh. Eric Murdoch looking to answer the call has it slapped away out of bounds. It'll be Providence ball. You know, that was the lifeblood for the Huskies last year. In Big E's play, they averaged, they had a plus seven differential in turnovers they committed versus turnovers they forced. Three, that led to additional shot opportunity and transition basket. And that's how they were able to put together runs to beat teams an awful lot last year. Haven't been able to do it as much this season. John Gwynn out to Walker. Sellers is posting up inside on Troy Brown. Gwynn to the hole. Can't kiss it home. Torino Walker, a big time rebound. Simpkins takes it in. The runner is short. And Rod Sellers, I believe, is going to be called with the foul over the back. Troy Brown doing a nice job. Getting inside on the glass. Second on Sellers, eighth on the team, and Troy Brown, the freshman, will be at the line one and one. Pretty good free throw shooter as we look at Elad Katz coming back in, and John Gwynn goes to the bench. Gwynn with four. Katz has a half dozen off a couple of three. Torino's a man, isn't he? Wow, that Smith was in to that keeps night. on going. That iron free throw call. <laughs> Offensive foul, Eric Murdoch, as he just ran over Katz. He kind of gave it up for the team right there. He really did. Nice job by Katz, but one more dribble. Eric Murdoch can get by him. One more bounce and he can get around him. Instead, he picks up his dribble too soon, and Katz with a nice job to take the charge. Walker quickly to Smith in the middle. Over to Sellers, trying to go up strong, and he's hammered by Tony Turner. Well, in addition to the turnovers that have created some opportunities for UConn, Providence not doing a good job of getting back defensively. They've been beaten down the floor three or four times, and each time a basket has been scored or somebody's been sent to the line. Four of six shooting for Sellers tonight from the field. Jim Calhoun in his fifth year at the University of Connecticut. Ah! He understands the mentality of the fans in terms of what have you done for me lately you hit a little air pocket and drop two in a row and people wonder what's wrong picked off by Burrell Scott the two <laughs> 15 point Connecticut lead their biggest of the night well the Friars are making some adventuresome passes here 
Well, the guy with the ball is being stranded a little bit. His teammates aren't coming to help him out. They're leaving him on an island. When you're being pressured, you have to keep your dribble alive, but you need some help from your teammates. They have to find the seams and get in position and then come catch the basketball. You just can't wait for it to get there because the defense is active. Sellers goes to the bench with three, and Lyman DePriest checks in. And Marvin Sattler is back at the free throw line again. Marvin's spending a lot of time at the line today. See, the key for Connecticut coming into this game, we talked about it at the top, they like to turn you over. They've done that. They've also defended the Friars in three-point territory pretty good. Cat stepped on the sidelines and turns it over. And when they've had to execute in their half court, they've done a decent job. But for the most part, everything they've done has been transition. And that's the way they best play. Turner could have had, a, had the ball if he was looking at it. Simpkins inside, Sadler, no. Oh. A step, according to Pete Pavia, not according to Pat Kellogg. <laughs> well, I think he was bumped a little bit, made a pretty nice solid jump stop in there. Cat skips it ahead to DePriest, Walker, oh, trying to be a little flashy with the pass. He had Burrell open. Maybe if he puts that on the floor, it's a deuce. Seton Hall with the lead, holding on, and Caps goes in, count it, and a foul. Gilad is having himself a night. We see him strong to the rack. Help that he's left-handed here because Ford tried to come over the top, but his body prevents that. The finish and the head first dive. The press row there under the basket. All right, Chris Plonsky of the Big East office making sure no players get Well, and you know he's got divided attentions and emotions when you talk about his family in Tel Aviv. Trying to use basketball as a diversion. 15-point Husky lead. Catch and release, and he got a foul from Burrell. Scott second. Sadler a tough guy to defend down there because he's wide, and he's wide in the right spot, right about your waist. <laughs> nicely, where, nicely put. That's where you want to be wide. He's got the broad shoulders, but it's tough to get around him when he knows where you are as a defender. He's having a career night here so far. He got a surprise start tonight, primarily for that reason. Give them some strength inside. He's giving it a little extra bounce now. He's ready at the line. You knock down a few when you're not known for doing it, and it can help your confidence. Collision with the priest and Turner turn of the ball. They find McDonald hits a three. Friars can wipe out leads in a hurry. No lead is safe when the Friars are in town. Walker decides to start it all over again as we approach two minutes to play here first half. Connecticut with 50 points on the board. Nowhere for John Gwynn to go. So he shoots him. And the Friars unable to control it underneath McDonald and Sadler get tied up. I don't know how John Gwynn wiggled away without changing or transferring the pivot foot there, but he did. Cats to the bench, Chris Smith back in, Murray Williams also back in. Friars, uh, the Huskies rather had six players on the floor as they're about to inbound that. Now Terena Walker will go out. 149 to play here first half, 50 to 40, Connecticut. William will trouble now. Burrell got free for two. He's in double figures with 11. Long lead pass, Sabbath blocked by Murray Williams. And they give Williams a foul. And Murray now has four. Not 
Nice look by Murdoch to the streaking Sadler. And Murray with a pretty good block there. Let's take a look underneath. There's the body. You saw the bump right there. Excellent call. Damn. He's even getting a roll now, Carl. <laughs> going for him. He's got a nice looking shot though. You take a look at his rotation, follow through. I mean, there's no reason he should be hovering around the 50 percentile. He area. won't be after tonight. He's <laughs> 9 of 11 now at the line. <laughs> Still about 30 points on his average up this before. Morrell with some time. Gets the bounce for three. Murdoch, he's been quiet. Very quiet by Eric Murdoch standard. Rebound Murray Williams. Up to the priest. Picked off by Murdoch and saved inbounds. Great athletic play by Murdoch. But then the Flyers turn it over on the other end as Eric couldn't catch up with the pass. Murdoch one one to go in there. Murdoch took his eye off the pass. He was looking at his defender trying to plan his attack on the hoop before he caught it. Here's the man of steel doing what he does so well. And then the nice effort to make the save and get it to a teammate. With the left hand, no less, keeping it inbound. The crease goes back to the bench. It's Burrell, Peichel, Smith, Gwynn, and Sellers on the floor for Connecticut. Murdoch, McDonald, Simpkins, Western, and Troy Brown out there now for Providence. Michael taking it strong to the bucket. And a foul on the drive could be McDonald. Nope, they give it to Murdoch. Boy, Rick Barnes wanted to find out who was guarding Michael, and whoever volunteered that information will sit down now because they don't think Michael should beat any of their players off the dribble. Franklin Weston goes to the bench and gets an earful from Rick Barnes. First points for Steve Beichel tonight, and Rick Barnes still over there with Franklin Weston. Muskies with 56, 57 points on the board. Well, you know when you play the Friars, you're going to have a fast-paced game, and the Huskies have taken full advantage of it. They've scored off turnovers, and they haven't really had to settle into their half-court offense. They've been able to beat the Friars down the floor and get some easy baskets. They've done a pretty nice job on this guy right here, Eric Murdoch. Lyman DePriest, perhaps the best one-on-one -on -one defensive player on this team, along with Chris Smith, takes a shot at Murdoch. Call for a block. That was a gamble, although he did guess right. Let's see if he gets to the spot. Here we'll take a look. Lyman in pretty good position. He even slides over the pick. Now nah, he's moving. He was sliding. Third on Morrell. Both teams have committed 10 team fouls, so Murdoch will get two at the line. Eric with seven points in the first half. Again, averaging 31 a game in Big East play. He's missed two free throws tonight, and he probably won't miss two more for another week or so. Morrell sits down, not wanting to pick up that fourth foul here in the first half. Serena Walker in. Murdoch makes the second. Huskies can hold it for the final one. They put together a 19-6 run here. And that's what they're known for. At least that's what they were known for an awful lot of years ago. Eichel taking it down the lane, blocked by Simpkins, and Sellers picks up a foul, and that hurts, because that's the fourth. The Friars hoping to win a war of attrition here. Sarulik will check in. And Sellers sits down. He has four, Murray Williams has four, Scott Burrell has three. And McDonald will be at the line for a couple. 
as good a free throw shooter as Murdoch is, McDonald is better up at 92% in conference court. Watson and Campbell up. Well, you would have thought the Huskies would look for the final shot on that possession, but instead they give the Friars two. Now, I'd really be shocked if they take a shot before the horn sounds. Murdoch diving, and they call a foul on Eric, who from our vantage point looked like he just tipped the ball out of bounds. Number three now on Murdoch. And Steve Peichel will be back at the free throw line where he is two of two tonight. So far from the time the Huskies got the ball and we thought they'd hold it for the last shot, we've had three different possessions. Yeah, and we right. still have 21 seconds to go. The Friars will have another opportunity at it. And the Huskies may have another opportunity at it too. The way it's gone these last 15 seconds. The priest checks back in to cover Murdoch, I would guess. Murdoch has gone to the bench, and now Simpkins gets it in the middle of Brown, stolen by John Gwynn. John's going all the way. Block tipped into Priest. Oh, that hurts. Forbes dribbles through a crowd. Finds McDonald. Let's go with a three in and out. The follow by Simpkins won't count. And the Connecticut Huskies of Jim Calhoun put 60 first half points on the board and lead by 15 here at the break, 60 to 45. And we'll be back with our halftime activities after these words from your local station. Mike Gorman and Clark Kellogg back out here at the Hartford Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut as the Connecticut Huskies put 60 first half points on the board and uh, defense keyed a lot of that offense. Big time. We talked about it at the top how Connecticut wants to turn you over and when you get turnovers you're operating three on one, two on one, one on zip and there you see the numbers right there. Connecticut plus six. Scott Burrell leading the country or leading the Big East Conference in steals and anticipates those passing lanes well. Deflection leads to the errant pass, and Burrell able to get it and get to the hoop. But there you see, that's, that's every point of the deficit for the Friars. It's a 16-point advantage for the Connecticut Huskies, and this is how Scott Burrell finished that one off. Flush it home. Burrell having himself a big night. We talked about the premier guards that we indeed have in this matchup tonight, Eric Murdoch and Chris Smith. Both of them have responded, Murdoch not to the levels that he has responded of late. As you can see, Murdoch and McDonald have combined for 18 points and two steals. Smith and Katz, 23 and four, but the individual battle between Murdoch and Smith belongs to Smith so far. We'll look at Eric Murdoch go first. Murdoch only took five shots, made three of those, and ended up with eight points in the half. Here's one of them, of the tough variety, little hanging one-hander. And on the other side, Chris Smith, who leads all scorers with 15 at the half, just kept finding ways. Here he just makes a nice little creative move as defenders left the ball and gave him the baseline. Some players in foul trouble, more on the Connecticut side than the Providence side. Murdoch and Bragg with three, but again, this is the Big East, so they have six. And Sellers and Williams, four apiece, so they'll have to watch this step, especially early. But here's one of those turnovers that came late in the first half as it was winding down and really cost the price. Here, Lyman DePriest just going to attack the glass and get the John Gwynn miss, but that whole sequence started by the turnover. Marvin Sadler having himself a good night, leading the way with 11 points. McDonald with 10. Murdoch, the key, though, only 8, and he averages 31 a game in Big East play. Smith with 15, Burrell 14, Sellers 10, but again, the foul trouble there, a problem for Rod Sellers. We are set to go here in the second half. It is Turner, McDonald, Bragg, Murdoch and Sadler on the floor for Providence College. Smith, Katz, Cerulek starting the second half and places Sellers with those four fouls. Burrell and Walker for the Connecticut Huskies. And Providence has got to get Eric more than five shots. There's one. 
And they've got to do it defensively, Mike. 60 points, way too many. I mean, in an NBA game, 60 and a half is way too many, let alone talking a 40-minute game. Sharula pulls up. Can't kiss it home. Rebound ripped off by Sadler to make that turn. They also have to do a better job of handling the ball. McDonald, the pull-up jumper, no. Smith there. With the head up, catch is ahead of the field. Smith just keeps going. Little double pump job is wild. Out of bounds, it'll go back to problem. See, one of the things you have to guard against when you have a double-digit lead is to think it's going to be just as easy as it was in the first half and settle in and get relaxed and take some quick four shots. Quick one there by Murdoch, who tracks down his own rebound, saves it inbound. Sarula, though, able to come down with it in a crowd of black shirts, gets it up the cap over to Walker. Morrell puts it on the floor. Inside, Torino Walker. How the foul? A continuation there on that one, I think. <laughs> Serrano with nice, strong post-up position inside. Here you'll see Sattler go for the steal, doesn't get it. And Torreno, as Murdoch came in and picked up the foul as he shot it. It was indeed Murdoch who was given the foul on that second box, and Eric Murdoch now will play with four. The Huskies basically just want to keep on keeping on that free throw. High and wide. And no chance. McDonald with a high and wide one of his own. Turn his turnaround is short. Slapped away from Burrell, who gets it back and dribbles out himself. Even Chris Smith can't go get that ball. To finish that thought, obviously Kentucky, UConn just wants to keep on keeping on. Providence has had four or five shots here already and only got one to go down. And that's not the way you play from the bottom. Bragg comes high, Walker's on him. Turner in the first half would have put that up because he was putting up the three quickly. Now he's looking inside, gets it back. And this is again outside, and they got a push on Marquise Bragg in the rebounding action. And now Bragg will play with four. You may see a lot of bench guys before this one. Neither one of these teams really has a guy that they can put on the block and throw it into on a consistent basis. So a lot of times in their half court, they're forced to live and die with the jump shot. That's why the transition game is so important, I think, to both teams. And Connecticut has done a much better job, obviously, so far. The ruler spins and leans and gets two. Very nice play that time by the big fella. Excellent patience. 17-point Husky lead. And Scott Farrell just picked up his fourth personal foul. Marley Williams will get up off the Connecticut bench. One he'd like to have back. Now he's got the big cushion. No need to reach in on a dribbler. Especially a guy that's not going to hurt you 30 feet away from the hole. Murdoch inbounds to four. Caps will come out defensively on him. Boy, Smith doing a nice job shadowing Murdoch. Eric has to give it up. It's picked off by the Huskies. Murdoch and Turner might have got away with one there. Murdoch ends up carrying a three. Well, Chris Smith looking at the officials wondering why he didn't hear it. whistle on Tony Turner. He picks up his second. Watson and turn around. You know, UConn got 40 shot attempts in that first half as we take a look at Deaton Hall. And that's at the dome. Holding on to the lead. A little smaller than the last time we checked on the Bureau scoreboard. Caps the leader. Sadler, a big rebound to four. Boy, it's good up. look is right, and Torino Walker comes hard to prevent the layup. 
But UConn took 40 shots in that first half. My 23 of those were in the paint. That will help you shoot 55% from the floor. Sure will. Actually, 57 is what they shot in that first half. Simpkins still doesn't finish, Mike. He uses his upper body a lot, talking to assistant, to assistant coach Larry Shiat. And he and I both agree that Simpkins just doesn't use his lower body enough because that's where you get your strength from, that base. And he tries to finish with his upper body. And he's going to be a good one. If you watch closely, you almost can't even see it in the free throw. He's kind of stiff legged on the free throw. Oh, you're observing, aren't you? Right well, on top of hanging around with you. Yeah. Oh, is that what happened? I thought it might be from hanging around with, with the governor. <laughs> Bill Rafter. The ruler's on a wing. Walker backs it out. Then he goes inside nicely to Williams at the goaltend. If there's a foul, they should count the bucket. Well, Murray Williams just gets away from whoever's supposed to be defending him. And there's the pin. Good call. And the push was underneath with the right hand. That's the second on Dickie Simpkins, and it'll put Murray Williams at the line, his first basket of the game. Another rebound for Sadler. Sadler's been solid. He sure has. Fourth. A floater for two. They really like his quickness getting the ball up the court. Murray Williams right back for two. Jim Calhoun probably likes that transition opportunity. Don't look down. You miss a hoop. Stay out of that popcorn. Murdoch for three. <laughs> breaking the pressure to Cerullo. Providence will really force your big guys to handle the ball. They better know how. Caps getting it right back. Rudolph doing a great job denying Smith. Chris trying to create. Leans up an underhanded shot. Simpkins kind of standing there. Took the rebound in the fourth. And... The Flyers catch a break, and then Murdoch can't handle it. Forbes' pass really went in. And we are going to get a timeout here with 15.36 to go in the game. 68-56 Husky by a dozen. And on the Buick scoreboard. Whoa, wow. The St. John's Redmen all over Pittsburgh, 43 to 22. It's kind of Louis' pace there. And Boston College with a seven-point lead on the Hoyas of Georgetown. Well, BC played the Hoyas pretty tough at the Cap Center. So not totally surprising there that Pitt-St. John's game is there. It's hard to say after, what, 25 years that Louis sneaks up on you, but he just keeps sneaking up on you. You don't think he's got a great team, and then they go out and beat you. That's Connecticut. Exactly, and you might have to look back to that game as maybe when the Johnnies turned it on in the conference because they had struggled in a couple of games prior to that, although one was a win against Boston College. Murray Williams trying to go. John Gwynn pops out just in the game, comes up shooting. Tipped and controlled by Eric Murdoch on the baseline. Great Up lead. to Marquise Bragg, misses the dunk. That's a finish you have to have when you're trying to come back. Chris Smith takes it in traffic, has it knocked away out of bounds. Great play by Murdoch. He's playing with four. Providence has stepped it up a little bit defensively. The Huskies have been forced into a couple of tough shots. Jim Calhoun up looking for that fifth foul. Torino Walker just muscles it up, gets the basket and a foul. Kind of makes a space for himself here, doesn't it? Creating room. The big fella just splits two defenders. And Sattler on the reach in, claiming he didn't touch him. But That's three on Sattler, five on Providence here in the second half. Lyman DePriest in, Murray Williams out. 
Karina Walker. Walker with eight points, four or five from the field. Bit of an adventure at the free throw line. Sadler lets one fly outside and hits it. Well, that space created by Trent Ford pushing the ball up quickly. Sarula finds Lyman to free. Back to Smith. Spinning away from Murdoch to pass too hard for Walker to handle. Here comes Murdoch the other way. Just weaving his way through with the left hand for two. <laughs> Loves to go to the left. And that's why, folks. The Friars have it down to 10. You know, when you look at a double-digit deficit when you play Providence, you have to three, think in terms of threes. So that cuts down the possessions they need to get back in it. John Gwynn knocks down a two. Was that without a dribble? I think that was a catch and pull up. And Gwynn is called for a reach-in foul. Either Gwynn or Smith. They're going to give it to Chris Smith. It'll be his second. Catch this drive by Eric Murdoch. How sweet it is to the left, to the glass. A little scoop of cream with that one. He went down and got a scoop and kissed it off the window nicely. Ten points in the second half here for Murdoch, who is capable of runs all by himself. Scored 19 of Providence's final 21 against Georgetown. McDonald had it partially blocked, but a nice play underneath. Bragg can't get it down. Second time, yes. And a foul on Burrell, who came back in and quickly picked up his fifth. That's huge. They volleyball it around, and nobody able to come up with it. Bragg with a double clutch. Aaron shot, gets it again, finishes this one. And Burrell, my goodness, um, Casper possibly got that foul. Wait till he sees that replay. <laughs> Jim Calhoun. <laughs> Darrell goes to the bench with five, and Murray Williams is back in. Marquise Bragg at the free throw line. Rod Sellers on the floor, playing with four. Simpkins down low. He picks up a foul. So right now, the Huskies doing a little bit of what Providence did in the first half, not coming up with those loose balls, not squeezing them. Providence now making a run. And Dickie Simpkins will have a chance to bring this lead below double figures. Morrell has five, Sellers four, Williams four, and now Chris Smith three. And Providence starting to chip away at this lead, really in a way, Mike, that doesn't expend a lot of effort. They're getting some free throw opportunities. The last couple of points they've gotten have been on follow and put back. And you always worry about that when you're making a comeback. Well, here's another bounce Providence's way. McDonald. That would have been big. But look at the rebound on the weak side. And a travel is called. Good effort by Campbell. But he couldn't keep his feet. Well, I tell you what, Providence really attacking the backboards and starting to seize momentum here as the Huskies a little flat-footed. Where McDonald makes that three, we've got a whole different ball game. Look at maybe at a timeout from Calhoun if he dropped that. Smith comes back, can't get it up. And they will go back to the Friars as Smith couldn't control his own rebound. Tough shot. You need to settle down. Chris Smith has the ability to create his own, but you have to be selective when you sense the momentum starting to change a little bit. 15 first half points for Smith, and that's where he sits with 15 with better than seven minutes gone in the second. Murdoch, good pass inside. Marquise Bragg, the hoop. Put it right where it had to go to get inside. Steal by the Friars, stolen back by Smith. Huskies need good execution here. They need to free somebody up for a good shot, being inside or on the perimeter. Priest and Katz went the wrong way. At least as far as Lyman was concerned. John Gwen in and Gilad Katz out. 72-65.
Look at the fries all over the boards in the second half. They've gotten half of those 15 off missed free throws. Wayne is out on McDonald. I think it's EM time. Murdoch gets a little screen. Leaves it for McDonald. Rebound to Seller. They got a good one. And Gwen can't control the pass. Just as every pass was something of an adventure for the Flyers in the first half, Connecticut is kind of in Disney World on a lot of their passes here in the second. 11.48 to go, and it's 72.65 back after these words from your local stations. The Hartford Civic Center, 72.65, with just under 12 minutes to go in the game. Watts, Simpkins, Murdoch, Campbell, and Marquise Bragg on the floor now for Providence College. Smith, the priest, Sellers, Williams, and Gwen out there for the Huskies of Connecticut. Simpkins has some nice ball handling skills. Well, I tell you what, might not be a bad move since Sellers has the five fouls to maybe let Dickey handle it a little bit. But it's hard to keep it out of this guy's hands when he's on the floor. Lyman DeFries gets the defensive job, and Murdoch beats him and nails it. Little two-man game, beautiful execution. 20 now for Eric Murdoch, leading scorer in the game. John Gwynn bounces off Simpkins at half court. Huskies really playing tentatively, Mike. They're playing on their heels. They're playing as if they're, they're afraid. They're playing as if to protect the lead instead of to build upon. They haven't got much left to protect. It was as high as 17. It's down to five. Smith, Little Avenue to the hoop for two. First basket of the second half for Chris Smith. Campbell hits a three. See, that's why Eric Murdoch is so dangerous. You think about him scoring, but he draws people and finds teammates. That's the first three of the year for Fred Campbell in Big East play. John Gwen answers with a two. Six-point game halfway through the second half. Murdoch gets it back from Simpkins. Murdoch wants somebody to come out and set a screen for him. Simpkins looking inside, and they get the Priest with the foul. Bragg had pretty good position. Excellent position, and, and the Priest gives up about three inches and probably... 15 pounds as well. And Bragg had him eclipsed in the paint area. 16 fouls now on the Huskies. Five on the Providence College Friars with 10.06 to go in the game as the priest sits back down. Providence has been parked on five team fouls for a while and playing good defense. Inside, Sadler hits another bucket. 15 for Sadler. I'm sure that's his all-time Big East high. And he's definitely the leading candidate for our Infinity POG. Smith fakes the three. Makes the two. Excellent control. It's interesting to watch like the Friars are just looking to get the ball back in Murdoch's hands whenever they can. He can make good things happen whether it's for himself or his teammate. As long as the other guys move and don't stand around and get mesmerized by him. Probably the longest the Friars have held the ball tonight. Tipped away by Williams out of bounds with 14 seconds on the shot clock. debate here and Rick has it and he's hoping his team will get it and they do it looks like might not have given it back Forbes and Turner check in now for the Friars Watson Bragg to the bench Husky's doing a pretty good job the last few possessions of keeping the Friars at bay you know, the Friars have gotten it back to six but no close before the shot, a foul on John Gwynn outside. That'll be the 16th foul, second on Gwynn. That's 
correct that. They gave it to the priest. And now the Friars will be shooting. And yep. They still have a foul to give before the Huskies would start to shoot. It'll be Forbes at the strike. The Friars have had as much success retrieving misses as they've had making them here in the second half, making free throws. As we take a look at Rick Barnes. Always teaching. You know, they shoot the NBA three in practice as a way to make the college three a little short in their minds. So they crank it up an awful lot. And really an interesting philosophy. John Gwynn trying to put a move on Forbes. They somehow get in there. Forbes comes down with the rebound. Forbes, bounce pass to Murdoch, finds a way to throw it up over his head. Foul Walker, I believe. Yes, it is. Second on Torino. Pretty nice push of the ball by Forbes. There you see the nice bounce pass. Murdoch inside with the trees, just wants to lift somebody and create some contact. And that's just what he did. 18 fouls now on the Huskies. Murdoch, after an eight-point first half, has exploded here for 16. And he's done it under control. You know, he hasn't really gotten out of the offense. He's taken a shot when it's been there, and he's helped teammates get open shots as well. And he's been good defensively playing with those four fouls. Closest the Friars have been a long time with eight and a half to play in this one. 78-75. Smith inside. Sellers, whoa, swallowed up by Bragg, but a foul call. Or was that Troy Brown who swallowed I think it was Troy Brown yeah. that got up there with him. Boy, Murdoch made a nice play to change. Chris Smith wanted to shoot that, and Murdoch recovered and forced him to make that pass. Pretty good catch by Sellers. Now, obviously, the Friars are the more confident team now. You can just see it. They're upbeat. They're positive. This is the important phase of the game now for Connecticut because they play on the lead for most of this game. Now the heat and the pressure is a little different as the Friars make a huge run. They can get to two if they convert here. They get a break on a call. I think it may have been Troy Brown. Yeah, I think he was clearing out down low. His second, 17 foul. So Sellers will get another opportunity for two. Huskies have been known to struggle at the line. They had a great first half, 77% shooting. And that'll help those numbers. Here comes Bragg back in, and the freshman Brown goes to the bench. Well, you hear all the chatter underneath the hoop as the Friars try to get ready with what they're going to do. Now, Torino Walker, I think, picks up the push-off on the offensive board. You got it. His third. Yeah, we're going to shoot a lot of free throws. Let's take another look. Well, take a look. Top of your screen, there's the push. Very minute, but enough. See, when you use your hands inside, you have to be hidden. You have to try to keep your hands close to your body and the guy you're moving. If there's too much space between the two of you, it's very obvious to the officials that you've pushed off. But if you keep it tight, there, you, you can't really tell. And I, I know from experience. Yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> I've only seen you in elevator. 8.14 to go in the game. Walker. 
Walker putting it on the floor. Nearly traveled with it and kicks it back out to Smith. You know, this is where the Huskies miss the Dove Hennefeld and Tate George from a year ago. When they need big plays, they really haven't established a go-to guy other than Smith. But he has to handle the ball so much that he often ends up doing something like that. Huge offensive board there by Rod Sellers. As Smith forced that one a bit. And you have a tendency to do that when you have the ability to get your own shot and the ball is in your hands. He's fighting the shot clock just a bit. Not a terrible shot, but certainly you'd like to get a little better at Sellers doing yeoman's work on the glass. Has a chance at the strike. Marquise Bragg rips it off. Three-point game. Bragg and Sellers. Going to work inside. Craig looking to kick it back out. Makes the spin move. Can't go as Sellers shut him off. Finds Murdoch on the baseline. Back to Bragg. Tipped up and in by Sadler. Uh -huh. If he doesn't get the infinity player of the game, he certainly gets a game ball. 19 points for Marvin Sadler. Smith fakes the three. Dishes it for Williams. He's hammered. He'll go to the line. Excellent play by Chris Smith. He's trying to put his guys on his shoulder. Penetration and dish. You know, you underestimate that intangible quality of guys that can make big plays at critical points in the game. There are a lot of guys at both levels, collegiately and professionally, that don't want to see the rock when it's tight. I mean, that's just a fact. There are some guys that just don't want to really be in that position to where they have to make a big play. Williams misses the first. Sadler has to go to the bench with his fifth personal foul. Free throws betraying the Huskies here. Sadler's absence could hurt the Friars because he's been a huge factor inside at the stripe. He's done good work on the glass. Two of nine shooting for Connecticut at the free throw line second half. Five points for Murray Williams. 7.06 left to go in this one. And we've got a beauty. 81-79. Connecticut back after these words from your local station. All the way to two, and Marvin Sadler has played a big role. He's had 19 points here. He's going to follow one up. Bragg with a nice shot inside, but Sadler maybe a little push off there, but got away with it and got the tip follow. Moved Torino off the spot there, didn't he? That's a lot of movement, too. Torino is about 230. Simpkins gets it into Bragg. Murdoch comes to the ball. Under seven minutes now to go in the game. Lyman DePriest on Bragg. Murdoch. Wow, if that went. Murray Williams, the rebound up quickly to Smith. I think the Friars can get better. John Gwynn circles the way. I think when you play Gwynn, you have to play him to go right. Don't let him go left. Make him go right. Smith gets into the lane, can't get it down. Sell is another big offensive rebound. Well, Jim Calhoun has said time and time again that Sellers has some of the quickest feet of any big guy he's coached. And rebounding is more quickness and timing than it is anything else. Nice move by Smith. And Sellers just in there working, running and groaning to the offensive glass. Now he has to make it pay off. There's a 10th team foul on the Friars, so some of the pressure off Connecticut now as all fouls will be too sharp. You know, I wonder about that rule a little bit. You know, giving a guy the two shots after the 10th team foul. I don't it takes like away a little bit of the pressure. I agree. Sellers has the real big hands, and he has a tendency to let the ball slip into the palm of his hand from the free throw line. Turnover Providence. 
Williams able to get it to Smith, and they call a travel, and Jim Calhoun is beside himself. Seems like Murray got pushed a little bit there. We'll let you make the call, double team. Well, no, he changed his pivot beat from that particular replay. There wasn't much contact, just a walk. Fires can tie with the three. Four, another one of those floaters won't go down. Simpkins the rebound, back up, count it, and Simpkins can tie the game at the line. We talked about how he hasn't finished effectively. That was a big time move. When you rebound in the paint, no need to be in a hurry. Excellent rebound here. Keeps it high. Shows the ball. Lifts Sellers, then leans in to initiate the contact. That's a big time play there, folks. And that is the fifth foul on Rod Sellers, who now has to go to the bench. Sarulik is in there with Smith. Burrell, who is playing with five. The Priest and Gwynn. And the ball goes out of bounds off Burrell. Calhoun just looked at us and shrugged his shoulders. When a nice play to knock it away the inbounds back. Well, good defense, poor offensive execution. You've got to set your pick solidly when you're trying to get open late in a close game. I mean, you've got to free somebody so the guy inbounding the ball can get it in. Heard off. Spins. Smith got a partial block, but Bragg, the loose ball, it goes down, and Providence has got a lead. And the Connecticut Huskies turn it over. Totally disoriented. Really out of sync, and it's been that way for about the last seven minutes for the Huskies. I mean, they fought off the rally, but you can just see the Friars controlling the game. Oh, it's great look inside for Bragg, and he'll go to the line. Trent Forbes has given the Friars some nice minutes tonight. Well, he's been out of action for a while because of some academic requirements, and when you talk to their coaching staff, Rick Barnes and the rest of his staff, they talk about his ability to push the ball up the floor, but also to get in the seams and create some easy shots for his teammates. And he's done that exceptionally well here in the second half. And it also can spell Murdoch. Murdoch can take some time away from ball handling responsibility. Marquise Bragg, a 41% free throw shooter in Big East play. Drained that one. Shot it with big time confidence too. Second one is short. Flyers get the rebound. Murdoch for two. What a comeback by Providence from 17 down to four up. Well, I tell you what, Eric Murdoch is talking to Lyman DeBrief because he took a shot to his chest and told Lyman, I owe you one. We'll have to keep our eyes on those two when they get in the same neighborhood. John Gwynn takes it in and gets hammered. Eric Murdoch now talking with the official Jim Burr and letting him know that he was elbowed in the chest. And Jim Burr just kind of walking away, but those, oh, there they are, shaking hands. So those are sometimes the battles within the battle. Marquise Bragg joins the club now with five fouls. <laughs> Both sides may hit 100 here tonight. Nine for Gwynn. <laughs> Elad Katz checks back in for the Huskies. And Sellers will also get back in and Saruk will sit down. Sellers with those five fouls, but they need his presence. They need his strength inside at both ends of the floor. 
Huskies trying to churn up the pressure a bit. Ahead it comes. Sadler skips in for two more. Oh, nice look by Trent Ford. 21 for Marvin Sadler. And a steal. Turner got it. And Murdoch gets the basket. And Connecticut wants and needs a timeout. Look at that fire bench. It is 90 to 84 Providence. When creating the new G20 finance, the Flyers have really put it to Connecticut here over the last 12 minutes or so. Smith for two and a foul. You know, we talked about coming to a jump stop jump stop inside see that's where you get your power and Smith does that so well you rarely see him go in there off one foot and because he comes to that power base he's able to go strong to the glass and that time finish and draw the foul four fouls on Dickie Simpkins Smith can't get it down the loose ball comes to four see, the Huskies haven't been able to pressure as much because they've not scored as many points from the floor or from the strike. So the trouble Providence had with the pressure in the first half, a non-factor most of the second. John Gwynn defensively gets Eric Murdoch. Trent Forbes misses one of those floaters. Burrell the rebound. Four-point game. Under four to play. Sellers a little screen for Burrell, who comes up shooting. Won't go for him. Sadler, another big rebound ahead to turn. He gets two. How about Marvin Sadler with the head jump look? Six point Providence lead. Smith looking for daylight. Can't get the jump shot. Simpkins tipped at the fours. Up to Murdoch. Good look on the cut for Turner, and he gets hammered by Torino Walker. Providence seizing this one by the throat. Making all the right plays. Connecticut struggling again with their half-court execution, not really having a go-to guy. Hard to believe the Huskies led this one by 15 at the half. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you have to negate that one in a horse game as Rick Barnes even gets a chuckle. Oh. Yeah. It'll go over to the Huskies. 93-86, a seven-point Providence lead with 3.22 to play. Penetrates the leader for two. Boy, he's done all he can to keep his club in it. Murray Williams can save it, but Turner picks it off. Back to Murdoch, tip to Sadler, rejected by Rod Sellers. Great, great block. Up to Gwynn. Back to Smith. Smith looks to take it in traffic again, lays it down. Turn around, Williams short. Loose ball going to the floor. Oh! Boy, I think Marvin Sattler can get that one if he doesn't die. He's not traveling. He slid a little bit. But I really think he could have made a play on that ball without the die. And maybe even drawn a foul. Harry Williams nearly threw it away <laughs> trying to get it into Chris Smith. A lot of tight players out there right now. Late in a close game, Mike. Gwen comes up shooting and buries a three. 93-91. Forbes hit oh. one right back. Oh. What a big bucket by Forbes. Oh, that's a rally record, Mike. Gwen takes it in, won't go down, picked off by Forbes. He kicks it. It comes to Smith. 
to Williams and a foul on Turner. Two oh one to play. <laughs> you don't want to see this one end. This oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, this particular shot has been a problem for the Huskies throughout this second half. The free throw. Not there. All six of Murray Williams' points have come in the second half as Rick Barnes looks on. Providence has to be careful that they don't start the celebration too early. Two big ones there for... The senior from Charlton, Connecticut, and Forbes the other way. His club up three, under two to play. Forbes, good look for Sadler. Well, I tell you what, you almost, when you talk player of the game, you have to include Trent Forbes in this equation, too, with this second-half penetration. Smith trying to weave his way in. Murray Williams lays it off for Burrell. Blocked by Simpkins, and he comes down with it. They want to use some clock here. John Gwynn, the grab on Trent Forbes. All fouls are two shots as Gilad Katz comes in with 118 to go. 98-93. It's a loud eight points and four assists for Trent Ford. Real loud. They've all been timely. Need something good and quick. Katz fakes the three and lost the ball. And there's the reach in foul on Murdoch. You have talked a lot about Sadler and Forbes as well. We should. But all Murdoch's done is score 29 himself. <laughs> yeah, he almost got lost in the shuffle. He really came out in the beginning of the second half and got going offensively. I am 21 in the second half. You're right on target. Scott Burrell and Eric Murdoch. Right up there in the NCAA in steals, and that's point number 30. So Eric's 31-point average in the Big East looks like it's going to be safe here. Solid as a rock. As the Friars hit 100. An amazing turnaround in the second half, though. Smith won't get the bounce on the three, tipped out of bounds. It's going back to Providence. They're up eight and the ball with 101 to go. It finds up wondering why the clock is stopped. Substitutions being made by Jim Calhoun. See the Huskies look to foul. Right now they need to stop the clock. And John Gwynn immediately on Trent Forbes. Checking the view of scoreboard. Syracuse coming from behind to beat the Seton Hall Pirates tonight. 78 to 64. So the Orangemen win it at home as they head Monday night to the Cap Center to take on the Hortons. Steve Peichel in the game, Trent Forbes at the line, 101-93. 293 with a minute and one second to play as Rick Barnes looking for his second Big East win of the year. 
That very easily could be four Big East wins. They've lost a couple of tough ones. Michael, a runner off the glass for three. Connecticut wanted a timeout. They couldn't get one quick enough. And John Gwynn is called for the reach in on Murdoch. And they call that an intentional foul. The Connecticut bench not at all happy with that. Well, the calls on Trent Forbes, he was pushed out of bounds because he took a seat right here in front of us. Still need to be knocking these free throws down. I mean, it's still a two-possession game if he doesn't get this second one. But they get the ball back. They get the ball, and that is big. The Fires don't need to shoot it. You can bet they'll be at the line again before this one's over. You know, we talked about this being a character test for this team. What a way to come back for the Friars. They lose a tough one at St. John's in overtime and then are down 15 here at the half and look like, looks like they'll win it going away. What a homecoming for Marvin Sadler at the line from Bridgeport, Connecticut. As he has had his best game ever as a Friar. What do we have him at, 23? That's what I got him at. Burrell fouls out with 14 points. All in the first half for Scott Burrell. Connecticut really never established a rhythm here in the second half. And I think part of it was because they weren't able to get the score they had gotten earlier and get into their pressure. Providence tightened it up a little bit defensively and started making some plays and gaining some confidence. And momentum started flowing and hasn't stopped yet. 24 for Sadler as he goes to the bench. The Huskies need three possessions. John Gwynn down there in traffic kicks it out for Smith who comes up shooting and buries the three. And this time the Huskies do get a timeout. 26 for Chris Smith, but it may be in vain with 32 seconds to go. And Providence up by five. Bounce pass, a five-point Providence lead with 32 seconds to go. In this situation, you always want to try to shoot somebody long. Simpkins runs the baseline, successfully gets it to Murdoch. He may not give it up. And there's the reach-in foul on Gilad Katz. 27.8 to go. Still need these tosses. Our infinity player of the game on the bench right now, but a big, big effort from Marvin Sadler. 24 points and six rebounds. Six of seven from the field and 12 of 15 from the line. That's being very productive, very efficient. And that was nowhere in the scouting report. <laughs> Outstanding job by Marvin Sadler. Murdoch now with this one can again make it a three possession game. And he does. Michael, a lean or two hard off the glass. Simpkins gets it quickly to four. Cats couldn't catch him for the foul. Nearly picked off by Smith, and then they make the grab they need to on Turner to stop the clock with 14 and a half seconds to go. Many of the faithful here in Hartford walking out, and the Providence bench wanting to celebrate. And if one of these free throws goes in, I think they ought to get permission to celebrate. Well, they've been on. They've been teetering on that celebration for the last, really, four minutes. Fryer is getting it from a lot of different places tonight. A lot of people are saying this was a one-man team, the one man being Eric Murdoch. 
But tonight, Ford, Sadler, McDonald in the first half. Wayne's shot is wild, picked off. Katz comes up shooting and knocks down a three. And Jim Calhoun wants and gets a timeout with four seconds to go, down by six. The Connecticut Huskies, everyone knows their story last year, so they will work every second and even tenth of a second off that clock before they give this one away. 108-102. You called it. You said both teams would get to the C note. That's impressive for a college game. It's not as if there wasn't a lot of defense played here. There was some pretty good defense. Jim Calhoun sending his club back out on the floor. Fabio will go over and get the Friars back out as Calhoun can do that when he calls the timeout. But the Huskies who came in here ranked 13th in the country in real danger of losing their third straight and going to 3-3 three and three in the Big East. And the Friars getting themselves back in the hunt to 2-4 and four, and that's a travel. 3.1 to go. Heichel's going to come back in to shoot three. If you're wondering about records, they are nine points away from the record for most points ever in a Big East game. Smith throws it up. Murdoch the rebound, and that is going to do it. As Eric Murdoch victoriously throws the ball in the air, and the Providence College tries a huge win here, Buck. Big time win. Again, this team now two and four, and coming on the heels of that overtime loss, impressive win. Along with Clark Kellogg, this is Mike Orman. Once again, the final score, Providence 108, and Connecticut 102. Seating has been a Big East Conference Television Network production.